Any chances you remember my initial house tour when this staircase was really closed off from the house and very dark? Well, during our renovation, we decided to open up this stairwell pretty much just to let in some more light. And we also decided to replace the stairs as they were pretty badly cracked and they had this DIY paint job from when the house was rented before we bought it. Welcome to a new series on my channel where we finally finished tackling the stairwell. So before we get to these stairs, I wanted to turn our attention to this open wall here. Obviously this is not the safest, but I always imagine some cool spindles here that close this area off while still allowing the light to travel through the house. Okay, so this isn't the exact wood that I'm gonna use, but this is sort of the size reference. So this is a two by two, so if you can imagine, this is what it's gonna look like. But we're gonna get some better quality wood because if you look, this is just like a really cheap like pine. Two things I have to consider. One is, are we going to attach them on this side or are we gonna attach them on this side of the wall? So these have to be four inches apart. From this post to this post, we've got 64 and an eighth. So to make this work, we will need to buy 10 spindles because the last ones we can just cut them in half. Let's go to Home Depot, shall we? Okay, so this is pine. It's really all I'm seeing in terms of two by twos. There's no two by twos in the maple or the oak. Okay, I've decided we're just gonna do the one by two. It's not as square. It's, you know, it's not as thick, but I actually think that might be nice to not take up so much space. And we're gonna do oak. It's still pretty expensive, like $13 for a one by two by six. But I think it's way better than the pine, which just, it, it was just so yellow, like, and so soft. And like, I feel like that's just gonna look cheap. So, let's get some oak. I'm looking for some screws now. I don't really want to wood fill because if I do, I know that like wood filling and staining, it's difficult, you know, to get it to match perfectly. Okay, so we're home with the wood. I've just like placed a couple of them up there so I can kind of get a sense of how things would look if we did it on this side. So on this side, you can see here that's that's what it would look like really and then we wouldn't be tacking it to here we would be tacking it to here so i would take out this piece of molding and attach it right to this so that it's straight so there'd be like no intrusion on this side at all which is kind of nice now if we do it on the other side the difference is it would go like that and then you would see it on this side I honestly think that they should go on the outside, outside being this side of the wall, you know, sitting there, sitting there. Okay, so I'm going along and marking where every spindle is going to sit. Basically, this spindle is gonna be four inches over, so I'm marking four inches, and then marking how wide the wood is, which is one and a half inches, and then just doing that the whole way down. Now to figure out the length of each of these spindles, I've marked it an inch and a half at the top. I'm just lining up my tape measure with the inch and a half. And then I'm gonna go three inches down. One, two, three. So this one is gonna be 40 inches. Okay, the next thing we wanna do to get that beveled edge is we want to switch the orientation of this saw. You'll notice at the back of my saw, there's this little turning lever. We're gonna turn that, and then we're gonna push the saw to a 45 degree angle. So now instead of straight up, saw is on the angle. If you bring the saw down, you'll see there's like that shadow on the piece of wood right there, and you'll see that it's cutting it exactly the way we want it to be cut. We are now in my basement because I just feel like it's too cold in the garage 
for staining and I have this big open space so why not do the staining in the basement um, our basement is like completely unfinished I feel like maybe one day we'll finish it and do some stuff down here but for now it is just a big unfinished mess so I decided yesterday to test out some stains um, the top of this red oak has been whitewashed and the bottom of it has been stained with this stain it's called weathered oak then I mixed the two stains and I got that one then I just sealed it with a satin sealer got that one then I did golden pecan at the top there you can see that was too warm then I stumbled across this stain which is called golden oak this is much more of the vibe as you can see golden pecan is quite red i still thought that this was quite warm so i mixed half and half i did half golden pecan and half weathered oak and then that's how we came up with this color i'm thinking that's gonna be quite nice on the floor. I think it's a really nice match. The problem then becomes these beams because this is gonna be a little bit more on the cool side, as you can see. But these beams need to be sanded, maybe stained and sealed. So we're gonna to get to those eventually. I think, <laughs> like everything, that's another project. Everything's done, everything is stained. This light is next to impossible to like notice the color, but there it is. Now we just need to seal it with some poly. So I've just got this diamond wood finish, water-based. Here I'm just kind of taking a look and trying to figure out where I actually want to put my screw in. I'm marking that the same on all of the spindles. Now to do this, we're gonna be using something called a countersink drill bit. It looks like this. So you'll see that little gold thing, it drills right in for your screw, but then this black thing can move up and down on the drill bit and that's gonna do a countersink. It's gonna make more sense once I show you, but this is essentially gonna go into the wood and create a bigger hole so that we can put these plugs in and then we won't see any of our screws. So you go ahead, you drill in. So that first drill is basically what our screw is gonna follow. And then right now that black piece is drilling into the wood as well. So you'll have something that looks like this. This drill bit's quite cheap, like six or seven bucks at the hardware store. And it's just gonna make this DIY that much better. So now I'm just going on and putting the screws in the top. Um, I'm just tacking all the tops in and then I'm gonna go ahead and go throughout the bottom. This is just like the easier way to do it, but I'm like so thrilled. This is very mid-century modern um, and I'm loving it. I have recruited some help just to help me hold the spindles in place as I screw them in taking a level just to make sure they're absolutely straight before I actually go ahead and screw them in. This is Michael telling me, yeah, they're pretty stable. I went ahead and pre-stained these plugs prior to putting them in. So I'm just taking some wood glue and sticking that in place. Because I don't have a rubber mallet, I don't know why, <laughs> I'm just taking a rubber glove and um, putting some protection in between and hammering that plug into place. Guys, I was shocked. Look at how good this looks. Look, look at me, I'm like, did I do that? So I just went ahead and did this to all of them and are you guys ready for this before and after? If you have any questions about how I did this, please feel free to leave them down below and I'm happy to help you and answer whatever I can. I know the house still has a long way to go, um, but I'm trying to tackle those small projects now and hopefully in time we'll get there. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.